you're just now turning, tuning into my videos, this is our Thanksgiving later because of medical reasons. Um, and we are also again doing our Christmas later. But what we are having for Thanksgiving, we are having a prime, prime rib roast, which if you were watching, you just saw me put that in the oven. We are going to have a caramel glazed spiral ham as well. And the recipe I have for that goes in the crock pot. So it's going to be the first time I've ever done my spiral ham in the crock pot before. Sorry, I'm looking at my dog over here. So. It's the first time that I have ever uh, cooked my spiral ham in a crock pot before, so we'll see how that goes. Right, baby? Bye. And we are having easy green beans with bacon and brown sugar, cranberry jello salad, loaded mashed potato casserole. Yes, it's a lot of food. We like to do leftovers and make new meals out of them because it's just so fun. I'm going to have a sweet potato casserole, a corn casserole, holiday mac and cheese, which is my son's favorite, and it is my recipe. It, it is totally from scratch. Doubled eggs, oyster dressing, and our two desserts, our two desserts, cranberry orange cheesecake, which was what my son asked for, my oldest son, and chocolate meringue pie which is what my daughter asked for. But those desserts are both of my, my recipes. Um, you know how you'll find a recipe and through the years you tweak it and you know it becomes yours. So these are my recipes. They are amazing desserts. I cannot wait to show you all how to make them. So here's a little short me reaching up here again. Now while I am cooking um, the macaroni, which I have the water, and I put some salt in it. I have it cooking. And this is going to be your box of elbow macaroni right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the holiday famous cranberry jello salad that my oldest son loves. That I make all the time. Um, so what I use, and I, I have to double my recipe. <clears throat> so I use a pound of cranberries washed and chopped. And I'm just going to read this off my... Uh, recipe. I use the, um, to chop those, I use my processor right here, which is excellent. Also, I'm going to have to do the same thing with the apples. I got to core and pair three apples, too. And uh, we just want those finely chopped. So you have a pound of cranberries washed and chopped. You're going to have four apples paired and cored and then diced up. You're going to need one and a half cups of white sugar, one four cup walnuts chopped, two oranges chopped, one half cup of crushed pineapple. You're going to use about six ounces of cherry gelatin. And of course, you're going to have to have your boiling water for that. Um, and then you use one cup of cold water with it. Now, I have always used a cup of pineapple juice instead of water. That's ice cold. And it just adds flavor. <laughs> so we're going to be doing both these things at the same time. And I will be showing that to you all. And I wish she would really be quiet about right now. Now we just put our elbow macaroni into our slightly salted boiling water. We're going to let that cook again until it's al dente. I'm already preheating the oven to 350. Um, after this is done, I'll make the homemade cheese sauce and I'll mount my camera and we'll go step by step with that. All right, y'all. We got our macaroni, elbow macaroni to al dente. You can see it's still, you know, it's soft, but it is not mushy because, again, it is a casserole. So we wanted to keep it intact and not overcook it when we were boiling it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start on the homemade roux, the homemade cheese sauce. Okay, so you're going to need one half cup of sour cream. This is for your cheese sauce. You're going to need three cups of sharp cheddar shredded cheese, which we are going to use my cheese shredder right here. 
And believe me, the blocks of cheese are healthier for you. They contain less artificial ingredients and you get more cheese as well. And we are doing a mixture of cheeses. So with the three cups of sharp cheddar, you're gonna also do a cup of Gouda. You're gonna need one tablespoon of Kinder's The Blend, one tablespoon of caramelized onion butter, one teaspoon of paprika, a dash of red pepper flakes, a teaspoon of ground mustard, three cups of milk, two are here and one is there. You're gonna need two tablespoons of cornstarch, two third cup of heavy cream, four ounces of cream cheese, four tablespoons of butter, and a can of evaporated milk. Oh, and you're gonna need one fourth cup of flour. Also, you're gonna wanna cook a little bit of bacon to go into it, so we got the bacon right here. And we'll go ahead and cook the macaroni. Our butter is done. We are going to incorporate our flour, which is the one fourth cup of flour. Now just gradually add that in slowly. Make sure that you do get all of the lumps out of it. And after our flour, whisking little by little, we're gonna start putting the milk in gradually. Whisking. Constantly whisking. I'm making a little bit of a mess here. Not meaning to, but it's happening. We're going to keep whisking it. Okay, now we're gonna open our can of evaporated milk. We're gonna open our can of evaporated milk. And we're gonna start pouring that in here. And keep whisking as you do that. Now we're going to gradually start adding in our dry seasonings. So we start with a dash of our red pepper. Then we're going to do that one tablespoon of Kinder's The Blend. Our one tablespoon of mustard. Maybe a little more of that. That should be well combined. Now we are going to just add this 
to our mixture over here. And I'm going to whisk that. And it's going to start thickening. I did spray the bottom of my pan here so that nothing would stick because when you're making a homemade roux cheese sauce, it can be hard to get out of the bottom of your pan. And now we are going to add in our sharp cheddar. Oh, that's my time. We're going to add in our sharp cheddar. And I forgot to tell you guys um, that you'll need to shred about another cup of sharp cheddar for the topping. Now, you can do crackers, like those club crackers, pump them up and put it in with the bacon and the cheese go on the very top, which I might have. So time consuming. I think I'm going to preserve that little bit and just add to it for the topping because I think there's enough cheese in here. We're going to let all that melt and combine together. And then we'll be adding in on that ground. Hi, y'all. I am so stressed. I'm running out of time, I feel. So we're going to spray this 9 by 13 baking dish. We're going to take our macaroni and dump in here. And it's okay, you can use your hand. If you need to use your hand, use your hand. Break it up. Now we're going to take this cheese sauce, take the whisk out. That's good. And we're going to pour this all over our macaroni. Seems like a lot. And stir it very well. I did have to hit it with some more salt and pepper. And I did grease my pan, my baking dish, rather, as well. Okay, you all, I absolutely have no idea uh, what happened to the clip at the end of my baked homemade macaroni and cheese with the roux and when I was putting the cheese, the shredded cheese that I shredded with the bacon. I can't find that clip anywhere. But after you pour that roux over the macaroni, you do then top it off with the shredded cheese. That was one cup of sharp, one cup of gouda. And then the bacon was broken up into that. And you put that all over the top of it. I don't know what happened. But don't forget that step.